We, this is the select board meeting of <laughs> December 18th. Um, open session public meetings are subject to being videotaped. Your image and voice may be recorded. And the first thing, this it's what, 705? First thing we have on the agenda is approval of minutes. Do I hear a motion? Uh, so moved. To and approve. S yep. <coughs> and seconded. Okay, and uh, then we'll take a vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Nice job, D. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> general public comment. This is where we have a moment of silence. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, our public hearing, our public poll hearing has been canceled for this evening. It's I suppose it's been rescheduled for January. Yes. Um, do, you, do we have the date? Is it going on the 8th? Do you know I what happened? So, yes. Do you know what happened? Um, there was an incorrect, the addresses were listed incorrectly on the hearing, so they have to make the corrections to it and redo it. So, yeah. They had it as Power Road instead of Powers Road, and they had it as, um, what was it instead of Coburn? It was something uh, different. I saw it was yeah. Co yeah, it was cold something. I can't remember. Yeah, Conrad, so Conrad or something. Time? Not happening. Yeah, no. Not no. Happening. Sorry. Thanks. You know how to check the agendas to see if it's on the first. Yes. Is it on the first week of? Yeah, be the eighth. January. Yeah, yes. we okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be noticed though. About ours. Yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, and we have a general department update from fire. Lieutenant John Polino. Yay. <clears throat> Mike didn't tell you about the meeting, did you? Did he? The hot seat. The hot seat. Oh, I'm just <laughs> the there. questions. You came prepared. Okay. I got a whole list. You got a whole list of questions yeah. for us? All right. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Maybe. All right. I'm just thinking. I'm ready. All right. It was the same report twice in the Yes, five, but right? it was a, under a different name. I know. The second I, I just one. took yeah. me a while to like, oh, great, this, this looks the same. Am I yeah. missing? Okay, good. Yes, oh, in the sorry folder. About that. Yeah. So, November was uh, again another busy but steady month for us. Uh, nice mix match of calls. Um, I don't know if you guys got the breakdown of all the calls list. Mm -hmm. uh, but a good, decent amount of uh, medical emergencies and always a bunch of accidents in town seem to be the top two always always up there um, from a fire prevention standpoint a uh, good amount of inspections were conducted and permits were issued uh, we had a total of 76 responses for the month of november um, and for the home safety checks i don't know if you guys have been filled in on what that a mm -hmm. uh, little program is we had seven uh, conducted for the month of November uh, some activity going on with the department for the month um, we still are continuing our details down at the school uh, that has increased with the uh, basketball after mm -hmm. school basketball program mm -hmm. so we are trying our best to fill those and have reached out to mutual aid to fill those as best we can um, We've done a great job of uh, filling those um, and have reached out to North Bro and Boylston, have been a big help in filling those vacancies. Uh, but the majority of those uh, details have been filled by our personnel. So uh, good commitment on uh, their, their behalf for filling those. Um, we implemented some mandatory uh, coverage for our call staff, which uh, kind of didn't go as planned. Um, we had a lot of vacancies in our schedules, um, and I'm sure Chief McClone has filled you in on that in, in the past. So this was a another attempt at filling those vacancies, um, and it didn't go according to plan. So I don't know what the next step is. I can't speak on on the <laughs> next steps moving forward. So um, that that is the briefing on that. Um, we did get some new as new used. 
SCBA bottles, that's the bottles that we use on our breathing apparatus, that was donated to us from the town of Southboro Fire Department. Um, that was a great help. We had a bunch of bottles that expired, so um, that took the burden off not having a bunch of bottles in service. And just to insert on that, that was about a $72,000 capital request mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was able to be eliminated yep. through this process. So that's great. So we, we were able to buy a couple years. This is <coughs> just a Band-Aid. It's mm -hmm. not a permanent fix, but at least it will get us through the next couple years. Um, for some reason, just our maintenance budget seems to be getting really pummeled this, this year. Um, the age of the trucks and just road road conditions don't help. These are big trucks and they, they really get abused. So um, tires seem to always be a hot ticket item on all these trucks. So a um, couple trucks do need tires so that that'll be an upcoming uh, maintenance item. Um, some initiatives that we are working on is uh, down on Brook Lane. We were working with the homeowners association board and working with them to kind of streamline their homeowners manual um, in conducting our home safety checks we found a lot of uh, issues and misinformation that was given out to all the residents mm. so in partnering partnering up with them we're trying to re rework that and um, I think it's a great partnership they're looking forward to it we're looking forward to it and um, I think it will be good Good working relationship with them just making sure all the information being sent out to the residents is, is accurate and and streamlined uh, all of our forestry equipment has been winterized for the season um, we are in the process of switching our records management system I'm sure chief mccollins filled you in on that that is a very long process and um, we are closing in on finalizing that. Um, our hope is to have that finalized by, it, have that implemented by January 1st. Um, fingers crossed, hopefully. <laughs> not, I'm not holding my breath, nothing ever goes smoothly, but we'll see. Um, but fingers crossed. Um, with the help of the highway department, uh, we were able to Kind of mitigate our bird issue that we had in our apparatus bay. They seem to love us. They used to love the police department and now they've come over to, to the red team. So they were able to put some flashing up in some, um, they were able to peck through some of the sheetrock and nest up there. So they, they nested up there all summer long. So with the help of Freddie and a couple of the highway guys, they were able to put some flashing and cover up their, their nests. Seem to have helped for a little bit, but they have come back. So again, it was a <laughs> short term solution, but they are making a mess in our apparatus bay. Yeah. So every day it's new new surprises. So yeah, it's, it's an ongoing issue. <laughs> They're not nice neighbors, so. Um, uh, plans have been submitted for a new store up at Highland Commons. I believe it's going to be a bubble tea shop. I don't know what bubble tea is, but sounds delicious. So um, that I believe that's going in that strip of shops by the 110. So I don't have an opening date for that, but it should be exciting. So. If you like bubble tea, <laughs> I say, but my roommate's going to be ecstatic. So that's oh that's really good. And I'll know now that the meals tax rate goes and buys it several times a month. <laughs> actually goes to the town. So. <laughs> In regards to the storm today, um, we only had a couple calls for service from the fireside police responded to a lot of wires and trees down. I spoke, uh, had a phone conference with National Grid around two o'clock this afternoon and we only had about 100 and s 150 residents without power as of three o'clock. I just checked my email, that number's gone down to 60. So as of right now, we have 60 residents uh, without power. So that is good. No major road flooding, just some puddling. Um, and that's pretty much it. All is good. Yeah. Questions? Um, your report also had it at just reminding people about the CO2 detectors and smoke detectors. I would read it, but then I'd steal your thunder. So if you want to remind people. 
cold season is upon us, um, so it is very important that making sure that your batteries are checked in, in your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Make sure that your smoke detectors are within 10 years. After 10 years, they are no good. Carbon monoxide detectors are five to seven years, depending on manufacturer's recommendation. Just make sure that you change your clocks, you change your batteries, that, that is key. And make sure it's a good quality battery and not an Amazon battery. <laughs> Duracell or Energizer. Okay. We don't like Amazon batteries? No. That's good to know. Okay. Um, uh, in the home inspections, I think they were pointing out that that's one of the things you're finding often is smoke detectors that are well out of date. That Very well out of date. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walk in and they have a nice yellow tinge, yeah. it usually is a telltale sign that they are uh, well beyond their life expectancy. Right. Mm -hmm. so. I'm getting to the point too. But I swear I changed them just like two years ago. We go up and look, and it's been seven or eight. And yeah. so, <laughs> like if people don't remember and swear it was a year or two, it's probably worth going up and looking at the installation and expiration dates on them anyway. Because, as you point out, it can save lives having working smoke detectors, CO2 detectors. My husband's got CO2 detectors on his Christmas list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There He's is exciting. another type of meter out there that is a flammable gas detection meter. Um, which is different than carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide, not to really right. ramble away, but mm -hmm. um, if you do have a gas leak, mm -hmm. the carbon monoxide detector will not pick that up. So mm. flammable gas detection meter is also. Electric baseboard. Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm fine. So two questions for you. Two answers. Um, on the CSX, and you said that the chief is developing a list. Could you please ask him about the trash on Linden? It is there. It has been there. There's it. They're buckets, John. They're heavy buckets because if they were empty, they we won't be there anymore. We won't continue that discussion. They won't be there but, anymore. But they're heavy, so there's something in them. So I don't know what's in them. Um, I noticed one of them were the um, the spikes. Okay. And stuff, uh, but they've been there since all the kerfuffle with the train falling over down on Linden. And when you do your home study, uh, your home safety, do you talk to anybody about you know portable generators? Like I have one, and I you know I know I leave it out in the driveway when I plug plug plug. But is there anything that you talk to about people who might have a portable generator that they drag out, plug in, and fuck go the lights? Not necessarily. Um, that is a good point to bring up making sure that their exhaust is pointed in the safe direction. Um, usually those home safety inspections usually, usually are focused on carbon monoxide, smokes, egress, making sure your egress paths, mm -hmm. um, fire extinguishers, making sure that there's no clutter around a um, space heater, things of that nature, but that is a good point. I'm going to note that. Okay. Do, do, you, do you do dryer vents? Some some places do, fire departments do. Dryer vents. Dryer vents. Look at them, not actually clean them for you. Right? No, right. <laughs> they probably just tell you you need to clean right, them. Right. <laughs> that was it. I'm letting you off easy because yeah. it's the first time you've been here, John. So I want you to come yeah. back. Oh, I would be more than happy to come back. Okay. Well, on those lines, um, I want to thank you for being here. Um, with the chief being on vacation, we talked about moving mm -hmm. the report to another night, but I, as well as Chief McCullen, are huge believers in succession planning, mm -hmm. and I would not be in the seat I am in today if people hadn't put me in the hot seat and given me that practice and experience. So, thanks. And you did very well. Thank you. Good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Hi, John. Right. Stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you out to the town to give the white hair bottles. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure there already was one, but I'll confirm. Okay. The next thing on our agenda is a discussion on the rail trail and the hundred thousand dollar state earmark. Okay. So this one took me a little bit to track down. I received a mysterious email about a week and a half, two weeks ago, from. DCR letting us know that uh, they wanted a contact person for filling out the contract paperwork for our $100,000 rail trail earmark for Berlin. And I said, oh, okay, can you give me a little information about where this came from? Typically with state earmarks, 
you know, we're aware of them, you know, so I figured maybe this was perhaps something that happened pre me. Um, finally got to the bottom of it. It was actually something requested through Rep Kill Coins office as part of the 2022 economic development bill that just passed um, last December. So a um, little different process than typical state earmarks. Mm -hmm. They're typically requested, but I think because the trail is part of a broader trail in the region. It was probably requested in a don't leave out Berlin kind of thing because they're seeking money for other parts of the rail trail as well, is, is my understanding. Um, the reason it's on your agenda this evening, obviously it's a $100,000 contract that needs to be entered into. That contract amount needs to be signed by the board. Um, I do also understand this is a controversial issue in town. There's been a lot of discussion, um, pros and cons, both sides. So um, I've spoken kind of a little bit um, with conservation about what their plans were for moving forward with the rail trail. I know they were going to apply for a DCR grant for a feasibility study. That requires a match. I did check with DCR to see could this earmark be used as a match for a feasibility study. Um, I have read the rail trail report from the advisory committee back from 18, and I think it's a, a great first step, but I do think a, a feasibility study by engineers would be good to assess some of the, you know, information that's in question because there, there is a lot of, you know, concern, I think, on both sides and a bit of confusion about what's accurate, what's not, have things changed in the last five and a half years, um, and what are the impacts now that DCR owns that land and can move forward without us and what role should Berlin play in that process because if it's coming here and DCR can do it no matter what you know what involvement should we have in shaping that process so I think a feasibility study could really address that question could look at impacts to abutters long-term maintenance costs to the town um, and a number of other issues that were presented in the rail trail advisory committee study so I did want to have that discussion with the board um, and let you know that um, if that's the direction the board wants to go in, DCR is comfortable um, using that money for a feasibility study. And the Conservation Commission did receive a quote, I think it's a year or two old? Two years two old. Two years old. So, and it was, it was just a draft, it was never finalized. So we never finalized mm -hmm. the scope or anything like that at the time because we weren't gonna move forward, so. Right, so you're probably was, looking at closer to like 80 to $100,000 for the feasibility study. Yeah, we were um, planning on, doing 160,000 for the grant because that's what um, Hudson is getting. They put an RFP out for their portion of the work from the substation over to the Bolton line. So th that that was the range that they were getting. So we, that's what we were planning to put in. And this is all very timely because at Capital last Thursday, CPA was there. There is a CPA funding request um, from the Conservation Commission for some of this match funding, but we thought this would be great if this could potentially be used as well or in place of. Um, so my recommendation would be to uh, use it for a feasibility study to just explore our options with regard to the, the rail trail. So the difference between the, this 100,000 and the 150 that CONCOM is asking for is what? I don't believe there's a. I'll let Robin speak to that. I was going to say there's really. I mean, assuming we could dust off that proposal and just have them do like a next level feasibility study beyond what the state did a few years ago, maybe it is just going to be a hundred grand, and you know maybe we don't need as much as we were going to ask for. We we were asking for that amount. That's because that's what Hudson was finding that they were getting. But so it was really before this came in to yeah. realize that there was a potential hundred thousand yeah. to spend. So you may not need the hundred and fifty. Well, no, so, I mean, if that's the thing. If we have this, these funds, we could still apply for the Mass Trails grant. And uh, I do need to ask them if, because it's an 80% reimbursement, so I don't know if we have to put up the money up front as much as we are asking for or as much as we would actually have to expend. Mm -hmm. So with what we were asking for, it would only cost the town, you know, 30 grand or so. So if we have this money, you know, we may not need to back it up with the full, you know, 150, 160, whatever it was. 
I could look at the language. Typically, with there's a couple different ways reimbursement grants work. Um, a lot of them, what they do is you can set up an account and do what town accountants love to do, which is called deficit spending. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know you get the reimbursement from the state, but it all depends on how it's set up. Some specific grants actually require you to appropriate that funding up front. Um, you know, and then get reimbursed. So it all it all kind of depends on the way the language is written in the grant. Yeah. Okay. And what will this assessment cover? Because as you mentioned, the 2018 report has multiple pages of questions and concerns about who's maintaining the trails. Which, if you read the report, DCR will come in only for major upgrades. Berlin is responsible for plowing and upkeep and mowing and probably more equipment and you talk about fire and police and how they are going to maintain uh, maintain the safety of the trails trash etc cetera, etc cetera. so I would assume that the assessment is going to look at yep. those questions because as you said there is a lot of misinformation that is now information that is solid information and the discussions are already happening on Facebook of bad <laughs> not so bad so sure would like to find a way so what is the assessment this hundred thousand going to cover specifically right well and i think it would look at those types of issues as well i mean that's really what a feasibility study does what is the, what is the feasibility of doing this in your town what would be the impacts which i think is huge um you know and and when you get into kind of talking about maintenance on dcr land um, you know, they, it would all be a negotiation. I mean, we'd have to enter into an MOU, you know, they, which could potentially involve payment. We'd have to look at what that is because they can't just say, here you go, town, it's our land. So we would have to have a discussion and negotiation around all of those issues as well. And I think a feasibility study could spell those things out. Um, I think there, there are some nuances that are, need to be fleshed out a little bit more. Um, because I would have concerns um, about the state telling the town to maintain land that's not theirs. Yeah, that's a, I mean, and that's my overall question is that unfortunately we've already whacked the residents with significant increases in their tax bill. Yeah. So my whole thing is what is the cost to the town? What is the cost to every resident? Be, and, you know, those numbers need to be clean and not, well, so and so told me, well, no, so and so told me. Right. It's like, no. Boop, 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 and this is what it's going to come down to per Correct. resident. And I'm seeing conflicting information just in what I've read and what I've heard when I've spoken with people. So I really think we need a professional engineering firm to evaluate this to be able to speak with the appropriate parties, um, you know, at the state and federal level when they speak the same language and really get to the bottom of all of this. And when their assessment is done, will they come in and present the findings? BHB or whoever you have. And whoever firm. whoever's yeah. doing the assessment, that they the come state. in. Yeah, okay. whoever would do the assessment could come in and present the findings. You could also have community, uh, you know, forums with questions be part of that feasibility assessment as well. Um, really depends on how you want to set it up. But I do think in this instance, especially public participation and public forums would need to be an important part um, of this, you know, process because, like you said. There are a lot of opinions, pros and cons, and I think we need to make sure we have all of the facts before we make any kind of decision on this. So I mean, right, you but a public forum wouldn't like determine what the state pays for versus us when it comes to public safety and plowing and maintenance. No, just getting out concerns that people have and being able yeah. to share yeah. the factual mm -hmm. information back with right. That's sharing back, but yeah. the, the feedback at the front end. You know, the opinions that I think they should have pine trees on the side or I should think there should be flowers on the side is, is not as critical at, at the early parts of the feasibility studies. Again, trying to figure out how much it's going to cost and, right. you know, where it's really going to go because even though the last study had several different routes in it. Even. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Well, and that's what these agencies are trained to do, these organizations. Yeah. I mean, they've done, you know, tens of feasibility hundreds of feasibility studies and so they're able to put together a path based on previous ones they've done the nice thing is this is not unique to Berlin this right. has been done in other communities mm -hmm. so they have a path that they can follow while also catering to the uniqueness that is Berlin so they'll look at kind of the structure of how they've done feasibility studies for rail trails mm -hmm. you know in other communities but they'll also be able to tailor it specifically to what our concerns are here well, I mean, and you made the comment too. It's if DCR can come in and basically <coughs> put the rail trail where they want. Why do? Why are we even involved? 
you know, it, because, you know, the old study had it going through this way, but I think some of the land has been privately bought now, mm -hmm. so now that path is no longer feasible. So if DCR comes in and says, we're starting here and we're ending here, so sad, too bad. But they will work with the local community. So just to clarify what I meant by that comment was if it's going to happen anyways, we should give our input because otherwise we're completely shut out of the process and have no input. You have a Paul. question. Yeah, a couple things. <clears throat> Being in a butter for about 400 feet along the rail trail. Um, and uh, my wife was one of the study committee members there were three uh, people on that committee of high integrity, and I am very displeased to hear CONCOM saying they just don't believe the report. I think that's really getting off on the wrong foot, and CONCOM needs to pull their head back into play here uh, about what's real. And I challenge the board, before you sign off on money, to walk the distance of that trail because otherwise you're flying blind you're signing a blank check and as a taxpayer I have a real problem with that it's easy to deal with things on paper or this engineering firm gave us a report but ultimately it's going to come back to your laps and if you don't have first-hand knowledge of what is being proposed and what is likely to change then you're not doing your job. And I challenge you on that, and I will stay on that until I know you folks have done that. Because unless you do that, you're doing a disservice to the town, you might as well leave your, bo leave your board position. So this 100,000, it in no way Thanks, Paul. entitles the town to say we're going forward. It's just, here's, a bu here's, here's money, we're gonna do an assessment, here's your finding. Correct. And so I the have town is right. not agreed. I confirmed that it can be used for just a feasibility study because initially it came through as improvements to the rail trail. Yes. And I said, well, we don't have one right now. So how can we have money for improvements to something we don't have? So it is not binding the town to any formal agreement. No. Yes, we're going through with and this. And you have the contracts. It's a standard state contract um, as well as terms and conditions that are in your folder that are backed up. There's no binding commitment to move forward with anything. We would have to look at additional funding for design. If that's something, that would be your next step if you wanted to move well, forward. Assuming that we're involved in design. Because well, again, if it's owned by DCR and DCR goes forward, mm -hmm. you know, we could, if we decide we don't want to participate, it could end up being the state just goes and does whatever they want with this property. And we're in a much worse place than we would be sort of partnering with them and working with them all the way through this. That's why you should be involved and that's why you should walk the trip. Yeah, I, I use real I, I'm a big supporter of real I think they're a great thing for economic development. I in think the they're right great place. for towns. And, and I think using abandoned rail trails is, is the right place to sort of generally put them on. Because put it, the, this town is horrible when it comes to biking. This town, biking on the roads of this town is a scary and dangerous thing. Absolutely. And so having something that is not on a major right of way would be an incredible sort of benefit to the town. That said, I'm not today ready to sign a check to say here is, mm. you know, the, the, all the free mm -hmm. cash we have in the town to just randomly do something to it. And so I think right. the feasibility study that finds the town, that answers some of the questions from the 2018 study, um, I, I think that one of the big things for me that changed from 2018 to present, of course, and why I think we might be in a way better position now is that with so many other rail trails already developed, one, there are patterns out there. Some of the, the what it does and doesn't do to towns is more known than it was before. But there's also more pressure on the state to connect the east and the western parts. Mm -hmm. And so we are much more of a linchpin than we were when we were sort of on our own. Clinton is now working on something. Hudson is now working on something well, what more. Does, what does DCR, um, DCR care, though, uh, the, the, whether you connect the rail trails? Could they want to walk? It, yeah. it, it, it actually does a lot of good stuff for economic development in the state. The, uh, yeah. The the friends of the rail trail in Berlin, one of them just actually just tried to bike from Berlin to Boston using the rail trail, and most of it is already there. And so that you know, if we had the trail in town, it would be actually easier to get into Boston. Right? It might even be cheaper, uh, cheaper, be faster for some on bike than it is yeah. uh, you know, taking the car and the bike. Yeah. Are you so. aware that there's an alternative <coughs> rail trail possibility over the aqueduct, or are we yeah. focusing on the rail trail? I mean, I think you got to keep all the balls in play, and it doesn't sound. I'm not hearing that. I'm not hearing deep digging in terms of 
what is best for the town. I think if, that's what a feasibility study is going to be mm -hmm. for because the last study talked about several different yeah. routes and as it gets it closer. Gets. Right. Yeah. I just think it's important and the reason why I asked regardless that we have the O oh, ten documents in front of us we have it the public does not so it is important for them mm -hmm. to hear that this hundred thousand dollar potential item that we may sign is in no way binding the town into any formal agreement to move forward with the rail trail that's correct that it's that all pieces correct that the there puzzle. is still not work to be done questions to be asked finance impact to the residents impact to taxes and we as a board need to keep in front of that and get the information out and not banter on Facebook but do something to get the truth Correct. out there. Who's asking the questions of the DCR? Correct. That would be the engineering firm. They would oh, be mo so the most appropriate to, to do. Questions in, in no, that's what the public forums would be, but the facilitation would happen through the engineering firm. Because Clinton is years away from coming through the tunnel and, and connecting through the existing rail bed. It's much easier done at Five Corners on the uh, aqueduct. Mm -hmm. uh, Hudson is, is that's no man's land in terms of rail trail. That, their rail is in even worse shape than ours. So we need, we need to look at both ends and options. And that's the kind of discussion I want to hear as a taxpayer. Well, I think Never mind being, uh, you know, if, if it comes to pass, that's all well and good. I'll deal with it. But I'm concerned that the due diligence is not there yet. And that's what this feasibility study and would do. As the first step for it, I would bake the motion that we proceed with a feasibility study for the $100,000 that we've been awarded. Do we have any opportunity to have input into the feasibility study? Or is it just they right. will do what they want? No, that's why the public process that we talked about in presentations before the board and the public would be a crucial part of the process. And as they, we talk about the scope of what that feasibility study would look like, that is something we can have input on as well. Is there a date-ish? By the time, the deadline for spending funds? No, or for them to start. And well, finish. We don't the, even have, we haven't put it up for big. No, we have okay. to make sure, well, it may not be subject to procurement, but it may be what? subject to designer selection because of the overall cost of the project. So we have to look into that piece of it. Right. I wouldn't have Kristen have a date something is going to be done by when you're not even approved doing it from the select board. Well, I didn't know that if it's one of those, you have $100,000, but you have until January 3rd to spend it, you know, type. That's what I was looking no, it's through, um, the exact date is escaping me, but it's a 2026 date that the gr that the uh, earmark runs through. I have to look it up. And would the public forums occur before this engineering study? No, it would be part of the study. Not before. Tim, did you have something you wanted to share? Did, does your acceptance in, sort of require that it only be used for feasibility? You're asking me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. I would recommend that be the first step because there's a lot of questions to flesh out. I mean, I I think that the feasibility study needs to be done, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that you you automatically want to commit the acceptance of the hundred thousand to the feasibility study because you may very well have a range of options. Mm -hmm. It it seems to me that if and I, I agree with Paul, the, mm -hmm. the notion here is to look at alternatives as well. And because of the Donald Lynch corridor study that proposed, you know, the Aspect Rail Trail connecting to a trail that will be developed along the Donald Lynch Boulevard, trying to come into Berlin somewhere around River Bridge. Um, the, the aqueduct question is still up in the air. Um, Th this is very specific to the rail trail, though, according to the earmark. Well, that's what I was wondering. And so... Yeah. It, it doesn't say which rail trail, it says right. a rail trail. But, but if, if it has to be, if the feasibility study has to only look with this money at that site... It's doing the disservice. I, I think that doesn't give us as, as wide an opportunity to investigate the rail trail issue in Berlin. So. Mm. That's where I wonder if you still want to continue with the CPA funding to look for a match from DCR to do the 
study, which gives you the latitude, I think, and I, I mean, I may be wrong, but I think, is, is DCR saying the only match the proposal that conservation is after if it if it only looks at the rail trail, the, the central mass rail trail? Or or can we look at a broader picture? I don't know what the, the DCR grant that you're applying for, what the parameters are for that. Well, so I think, are you referring specifically to the earmark? No, I'm talking about when you came to the CPA, it was 150,000, we'd commit that but it would be to get a match from DCR yeah. for a study, 80% reimbursement, you probably wouldn't use the funds from CPA at all mm -hmm. unless you got the match mm -hmm. so that the, the final sum from CPA might have only been twenty-five dollars or $30,000. But the state needed to know that we actually, as usual, had the funding in hand in order to to, to meet that number, if 150,000 was the number. So what I'm asking though is that if, if your deadline is February 1st for the grant, the matching grant for the feasibility study with DCR, and CPA won't have a vote from town meeting until May, then and then not willing to accept just CPA's word that we're gonna take it to the town meeting, you know, will they release the funds assuming that it gets voted on a town meeting? Or? So that's my understanding, because they're, they're not going to give us any money until, like, we have to expend the funds and get reimbursed on it. So even if they give us the, the Mass Trails grant, right. we're not going to get any money from them until we expend the CPA funds and they get reimbursed. So all I'm saying is that if you use CPA money and the potential is there to do the broader study, and you can't do that with the earmark. I think the town is better off spending CPA money and then using the earmark for, mm -hmm. for phase two. Because phase two might be an entirely different part of town than you know what we're talking about with the with the Mass Central Rail Trail. That that's the only I think you have more room to negotiate if you use CPA. So I'm saying accept the money the earmark, but don't specify that it can only be expended on this assessment right now. Because you may very well want to use it for some other purpose down the road. And, well, the, and the date you said by which? 26. December 31st, 2026. I just so, looked. Yeah. I mean, all of this is new information tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, I personally would like to think about it. A little bit okay um, I mean I wouldn't want two different studies working across purposes that right. would be my only concern no and I'm not it, but the earmark doesn't have to be used for a study nope but the it has to be used for improvements too right and and does it have to be specific to that rail line I can, can certainly ask the rail question trail in Berlin because there may very well be parts of that central mass rail trail that are logical and that wouldn't be contentious. And you might very well use that 100,000 for that. But you might also, if you've got an opportunity to use CPA money to, to do the match mm -hmm. with the state, to try to get a bigger picture mm -hmm. and answer a lot of these questions, I, I think in the long run, it, it may suit us better. So I will say, but, Hudson's already moving forward with that section to the town line, and, and DCR has a lease on the MBTA land out, I think Pollard Road, and or almost Pollard Road. And that's a pretty clear run. There's no, uh, other than one piece of the trail right before Pollard <coughs> Road that was sold off, right. it's a clear run. So the state is intending to, to build that out. Regardless of what other trails get built out, like whether it's the airline or anything else, the state is intending to build out that section. But the, the, the questions still remain as to mm -hmm. what happens in regard to expense and cost down the road. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about a section of trail that the participants in town government in Berlin aren't willing to support, then, then we're in jeopardy here. So I'm saying 
see if there's options that allow DCR to save face to some degree. <laughs> because I, th I think there's ways in which we can come together with a mutually agreeable solution. Because I think, I don't talk to people in town and say, I don't want any damn rail trail in Berlin. I talk to a lot of people that say they want it, they want it to be discussed more thoroughly and understood as to exactly where the best route is. And we, like we've all said, there's so many things. The landscape has changed on the state level. I mean, five years ago when Paul and, well, and Mary and everybody did that study, the state wasn't committed. They didn't even have their separate department for rail trails. So there's a lot of landscape that's changed in the last five years. So there may be more of a commitment on the part of the state to handle responsibility for these rail trails and getting developed than what we discovered five years ago. But we don't know those answers. So that all I'm saying is, when you do vote to accept the earmark, don't tie your hands in that it can only be used for a feasibility study. You know, and or feasibility study or whatever. Mm. And and I think that gives you the option down the road to utilize the funds to the best degree possible. And so why can't two different avenues be explored in that feasibility study? If you're focusing on one and there's another possible alternative, you're not really digging down and doing your appropriate due diligence. Yeah, it may cost more money, but for the voting public, we want to know that there are options, or if there are not, and maybe not, I understand that. But without exploring that, again, you're falling down. Uh, We're my, falling down as my, a town. My concern about waiting until Bay Tammany and CPA funds is that I think there's a lot more demands on CPA funds than we have of funds. And so uh, I think in a great universe is that this 100000 is the match for the Conservation Commission stuff that would allow us to sort of both go a little bit faster, but also just have CPA funds available for other things that are, are going to be more flexible. Yeah, I mean, the way things stand right now, the <coughs> housing, community housing funds right. that are requested are completely covered with money that's in that bucket already. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the two other key projects, both are easily covered with the money that's in CPA currently, and then we've got additional funds that are coming in this year. So I don't, and, and the CPA money that's committed ends up being utilized potentially as a match, and I understand the chances of getting the match are mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, that's why I'd argue Keep, you can, you don't have to accept the money only for a feasibility study. That's all I'm saying. Well, right. and the grant isn't written that way. But my recommendation would be to start right. there because I think you need to have a starting place. I don't think you're going to go out and start building a rail trail with this money. No. <laughs> so how many so. how many feasibility studies can you all remember where we didn't move forward with a project? Is this like starting the ball rolling, and there it goes and taking off? There was off a feasibility and study for a new school in 1972, <laughs> and the plans were drawn up, architectural plans for South Common, and the school never got built. Good to know. And the library. Third floor. Yeah, yeah the library. What's that? The third floor here. Yeah, That's right. Library, the library. The third library. Floor here. Yeah. And, and so I still think even if they generally continue, I think the idea that you, you know, approve some money, take a step, you know, get another vote at town meeting or another vote of the various bodies before you take the next step is the right way to go down these things because the political landscapes change, you know, something that looks like it's going to cost four million ends up costing six and so although people liked it at four, people may not like it as much at six. And, I mean, um, what, and the upkeep, uh, we have no idea yeah. what the upkeep is and everybody complains well, about their taxes all the time. It, it is true, but we're time. not at the point where we're talking about upkeep. We don't even have a rail trail at this well, point. And so the upkeep on a rail trail well, is not you, right. then, then super why relevant build at the moment. It if you, we don't if even know where it's going to be. If it's 20 miles long, the upkeep is significantly more than if it's five miles long. It doesn't, you know, it, you know, it doesn't matter. People are complaining about their taxes now. 
So, right, is so there is there any harm in delaying this oh no, I, I until the eighth? Because there's been a yeah. ton of information that you've yeah. brought up, yeah. questions you've asked, yeah. you've asked. I think we need to get firm confirmation that it's it's a feasibility study this way and a feasibility study this way that we just can't assume when we sign. Yeah, here's the thing that they're just going to do rail trail. So can we delay this for a few more weeks yeah, well, to come back with questions? Well, that's what I was questions? suggesting. So the only issue yeah. is, is that the Mass Trails grant proposal is due February 1st, and we have a CPA meeting on as of now on January 16th. So We're back on the 8th. In, okay. Can we plop it on the agenda for the 8th? That hmm. gives us two weeks to yeah, come up I with more questions. And any other information yeah. that you find you could share Or that with you us? can find, that you can send us, or you, well, Mr. I mean, Paul, or you, Mr. Tim. Yeah, I mean, what kind of information would you be looking for? Because, I mean, like, realistically, regardless of where we put a trail in town, we're going to have maintenance issues. We're going to have butter issues. We're going to have, you yeah. know, they're all the same issues. They're just in somebody else's backyard. Well, uh, I mean, I just... Think for, go ahead. All for our, me, is, all our it, it is the is the interplay between uh, this money and potentially that grant. You know, mm -hmm. what does that do for the the amount that's been run into the CPA, so that we don't mm -hmm. accidentally give you this money, but that means that we have to limit the study and we've missed out an opportunity, or or the reverse that right. that that uh, well, we missed I mean, on that. I, I also think for me is the question of uh, I've assumed feasibility study is finding the what looks like the most appropriate path in town, which to me means you're looking at multiple opportunities and and so well it says the rail trail so i'd have to find out if they're referring to <coughs> a specific rail right. trail meaning the wayside rail right. trail so i can certainly get that information right. I, I think we just want to not you know put the cart before the horse no. too when it comes to maintenance because even if you read the study it's a, it's a cost that's all I'm but saying. it does say dcr has that obligation and they would have to enter into an mou with the but town there's public public we don't have to accept that safety obligation and without those things funding. too and you know it's time it's a day and age where you know we may have to have patrolmen but it's not you know, our land areas. so i right. think there are some nuances that really need to be explored here that haven't been looked at yet yep so is it possible for us to send well, we can copy each other on the on the questions to send to you so you can gather them yeah. and then send them to whomever so that when we come back on the 8th, you can say, question was asked, blah, 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 responses, question was asked, blah, 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 I'd responses. I'd ask to have them by the end of the month, though, so that we oh, give I, the week, at least a week I to I think the state even the end of this week, if you're that expecting would be better. people, because you have holidays and other people yeah. having plans, too, and so... I think if okay. at least our, our, we might have nuances of the questions, but I think we could get the larger questions yep. uh, yep. put together by the end of the week. Sure. My, my last comment, if I may, is that eventually a rail trail is going to happen in town. I, I have no doubt about that, and I'm fine with that. I'm just concerned about the process and getting it and locating it. But in addition to that, if you're going to hire an engineering firm to do a feasibility study, there should be public comment prior to that mm -hmm. so that they are armed with pertinent questions that come from our townspeople and taxpayers. Hiring the company and then having a public forum is kind of putting the, the cart in front of the horse. But we want to hire the company fully well armed with questions of concern. And once you hire somebody, I can see it is, oh, well, that wasn't in our contract, so there'll be an additional cost for that. That's how that kind of world works a little bit. And I'm sure some of you are familiar, and we have to be sensitive to that. We have to be proactive. I think providing this to them would give them a great um, example of what a lot of the questions were, so that would give them a great jumping off point as well. And Kristen, I think that draft proposal included a couple different, I'd have to go back and look at what the language, and again, it was a draft so we could change the language if, if we wanted to have, you know, a public input, you know, public forum kind of thing before they get started, we could do that, mm -hmm. you know, yep. it's just whatever we want to draft into the, you could have a kickoff meeting. I don't think yeah. there's any question if we yep. want to have that, we should have it. Well, so here's a question. Um, so we meet on the 8th where this will hopefully come back and if you look farther down in our agenda it talks about the january 18th coffee talk do we just make that rail trail questions and get the word out far and wide so that it is a 
come to the meeting with questions don't be snarky because we'll shut you down if you're snarky but come with specific please tell me so this way when you go back you can say our concerns from the town are well it, it would also be a good time to share the information we've yep. got and perhaps um, even if, if it does get to the point of snarkiness, then we'll we, we need well, and we need to say, okay, put yours in writing and send it to us. Uh, you know? I don't know by the 18th, I mean, whether or not we get that grant, whether or not we're going for CPA. You know, I don't know if we even have enough stuff put together to, to know what to start on or ask I think on. It's a bit early, to be honest. Well, only then because I think we need to get more information. We don't even have a contract with the state yet be for this funding. So, I mean, one of the things we'd wanna do is make a determination, do we wanna go down this path, enter into a contract with the state, and then move forward? I think if we rush, we're going to be sorry. I, I'm not, I'm not saying- We should take measured steps. Yes, I'm not saying rushing, but this is probably a good opportunity to say things are starting to crank. CONCOM is starting to do their stuff. They're working with CPA. They're talking about money. We're talking about this. Let's get the discussion going now and stop this on Facebook of slamming uh, people who have... find something else I, under, to I understand about, that, you know? but I'm saying if you get it out now and saying that it's in process, hello, public, if you have any specific questions, please email the board at blah, blah, blah. And then this is just stuff that we can keep feeding so it's an ongoing discussion and it's not just a one and done. So... so. We will put this on the January 8th mm -hmm. agenda. Okay. Questions and to Kristen by the end of the week? Anybody? Yeah. Questions? And public, any questions that you have on the rail trail, please send them to townadmin at townofberlin.com. Thank you. This has been paid for by... <laughs> this has been paid for by the... <laughs> But yeah, no, I agree. I don't think that we can rush. I don't think that we can. Uh, there's just too much information that came out tonight that I would feel comfortable with signing, signing anything. Okay. okay. I mean, the only question I have so far is, can this be used on other mm -hmm. places? And not so just if there's the rail trail. more right. questions, I need to get them so yeah. I know what they are. And perhaps I mean, if like there's a direction that you want to go, you give them that's where we want to go and we want to use I this. don't want to define what no, the no. professionals think is right. the direction but if you that ask the them they'll probably just say no. <laughs> no 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 but I, I don't do feasibility studies that's not my job no, that's why know. you hire someone well so then it. the question is what what are you considering for a feasibility study are you confining yourself just to the rail trail or are you looking at alternate suggestions well, well, it again, depends the, on the what we can company will do what we ask them to do. That's, I, I think that's the question what I was is whether trying or not to say. the money we're getting it has right. to be on that one. Um, I think if you're asking what it can be also used for, I'd be interested to know if it could be used for um, uh, uh, staffing to help you know write grants to to uh, get some more funding for the rail trail. Uh, could it be used for project management? Uh, if there's a town role on a rail trail, because then we might use the CPA money to do, you know, that sort of CPA and use this to help make sure there's a town advocate, you know, when the DCR is is doing their parts of it. Okay. So I will add to the the Mass Trails grant. We are probably much less likely to get if we don't do it on the what they're anticipating the path will be. So yep. they're very willing to fund mm -hmm. the trail that's been studied. I, I don't know that we would get funding That's, or as much it, funding. It's good to know. For other, yep. to look at other areas. Okay. Yeah, I would rather do it right than right away. So. Okay. And we have until the end of December of 26, so it's not like it's a one year grant or anything like that. There is time built in. To so come back on the 8th. Yep. All of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe leftovers from <laughs> no 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 there'll be new, new years there'll be new Christmas snacks. there'll be new snacks. <laughs> Bring all right some Christmas cookies mm -hmm. yeah all right thank you guys have a good night thank, thank you Merry Bye. Christmas Robin Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Maddie holiday, <laughs> all right moving on to the town administrator report yep. and correspondence okay sorry let me just pull that up give me one moment please. Okay, 
Lots going on since we are still in budget season. Um, we did have the Berlin Boylston Regional School District present their preliminary budget numbers this past week. Um, their overall budget for the entire district uh, was just over one million, but they actually revised it to remove the walkie talkies and put them under capital. So it's a little bit less than a million now. That's what's updated. the walkie talkies for? I'm curious. Security for the schools. Just for Begin communications and right, case of but I mean incidents. like two. Or, or I, I don't have yeah, the specifics what are we, what are we on it right about? now. It's for each of the schools to have whatever the system needs to have to be functional. So that would be now a capital request that the capital would have to go through because that doesn't belong in the operating budget. So they've removed that. So it reduced, I think, to 962, well, I that, think was the number I gave That's you fine. Today. But, it, you know, I'm just curious why they would need those because they have other means of communication. That Just curious. I don't know. I'd have to ask them that question. Um, and then um, our portion of the funding hasn't been broken out yet because the revenue numbers that are allocated to the schools won't be available as we know till late February or early March and the school um, does not want to provide those revenue projections until that time. Also capital planning met on Thursday and um, we talked. If they're not providing, <laughs> they're not providing any budget until March? Yeah that's 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 like a little ridiculous. We're done like March 15th. We're not seeing the school budgets until the first time. And so let's assume the first day of March. This isn't going to work. So they come back before us, I believe, February 22nd. So they would have those numbers closer to that time. They would have a better estimate well, based on what's coming out for the governor's budget. How do we figure budget. out where, you know, where we can cut or spend more or any of those yeah. things? Well, this is just preliminary. Keep in mind, we haven't done our budget yet. So when they come back before us in February at the end, they would have more projections at that time. This is just, I, I couldn't give you revenue projections right now. Well, 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 when is that coming? I know that, so I'm not thinking of it like it did today, but if they're talking again, they start talking March, we have to have this like in the mail to the taxpayers. Yeah. You know, it's one of my craze that we get it to the taxpayers way time. too late in the process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that means we're, you know, then doing these last minute negotiations again and we're driving the mail, what, April 1st for a May meeting. People get two weeks notice of something that's going to impact a 10% increase on their budgets and their taxes. So let me and ask, I'm going to assume that it's higher than the 2.5% that we sent in the letter. Oh, yeah. It's closer well, to a 10% increase. And is that 10% increase counting this, this add-on, or is 10% just for it's the base budget? It's including this add-on. Okay. So once again, we expect our committees and, and departments and commissions to stay within 2.5%, and yay, they all do that. Kudos to them, you know. We all know that Peg can't do math, you know, so kudos to them for their, for their budgets. But the school, time and time and time again, basically takes the piece of paper, rolls it up, and says, too bad. Here's our budget, so sad, too bad, deal with it. When do we start pushing back and saying no? No. Well, my recommendation. Last year. Right. Uh, my recommendation, which was the same recommendation I would give as last year, is that you go to an override for any funding that's over. Well, then what you the better start talking about it now. I, I have been. Yeah. I have been to them. every meeting I've gone to. <laughs> yep. To them. If they want this, then they'll have to go to an override. And we'll sell how, see how well that goes over for. Well, yeah, and we talked about it last year. Could be surprised because it could pass. It, it could, could pass. Right. The preference was to try to find um, a meeting ground, um, but you know it's and, and that didn't work. And, it's also not entirely yeah, up to me. So their, folks, their meeting ground was eighteen percent, come down know. to ten. And their ten percent is over the money that <laughs> included not free cash from last year, not ten percent over the money. No, prior the, to over the base. Not including the free cash. Okay. This isn't okay. this so is, this level, not how it worked. Where's their level funding budget? It's all above funding budget. I kept like looking, going, oh, I must have missed the level funding budget. It's got to be in here somewhere. Did they just like and skip it and be yeah. like. Uh, that is, appears to be what they have done. No. No. Well. I mean, maybe we, as a board, need to show up at the finance committee meetings, post a meeting, and be there. So where are we with the joint Berlin-Boylston Select Board, Berlin-Boylston Finance? Where are we with that? Because this is the time now to unify and have a discussion and say we are the 
members that were elected by the town to represent you. Mm -hmm. They're telling us no, we're telling you no. As joint boards, we're telling you no. Where is that? Is, are those meetings we're, going on? I think on? those are off the table, aren't they? No, there was one meeting that took place in October. I don't believe there's that another one. That was the one. only one. Yeah, I don't believe they scheduled another one after that. I can certainly mention it to the FinCom. Well, it may have been the previous chair's that. idea, which... It was, yeah. And so it may be off the table as far as the new chair. Well, then you know what? We throw it out there and we ask. We... Maybe we, maybe we initiate something just with Boylston. I'm absolutely not, fine not, in, uh, in the doing schools, that. schools, but just to chat. No, absolutely. But, again, if Boylston was told $5 and Berlin is told seven fifty, we need to be in alignment and we need to be in agreement mm -hmm. with this because <laughs> I'm not passing another $600 increase <laughs> onto my tax bill. You know, I mean... Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, com I completely understand. I can tell you the Boylston and town administrator and I have regular conversations. I think that continuing to have joint FinCom, joint select board, you know, attendance or cross attendance at meetings is important. I will bring that up again at the next FinCom meeting. Um, and, you know, I, I continue to track it. And I've said all along what happened last year could not happen again this year. And it is. So we can't put free cash in. We don't have the free cash to put in. It wasn't a great idea. It was just a Band-Aid for last year because we had special education issues. Um, I am not... I, I can certainly give the feedback back to them. The select board wants a level funded budget. They want to see what it would look like again, yeah. like we asked for in the letter. Yep. Um, and I can certainly send that email out to the superintendent um, and How the finance director. about a five-year plan? Yep, they said they were working on that. I haven't received it yet. They should have worked on that before they worked on the budget. So then can you, Kristen, you know, talk to our counterparts in Boylston and see if we can do joint meetings and if they're in yay let's get them scheduled and if they say no then Chris and I and Scott and you have discussions how we flop another meeting on our calendar to go we we as a board go it's not just Chris shows up it's not just I show up or Scott shows up we mm -hmm. show up and we come loaded with specific questions that need to be asked and answered and not danced around a specific yes or no oh, oh. well and what we talked about too uh, that I think would make sense is you know you have the a representative from each of the FinComs a representative from each of the select boards and the town administrators that's what we had initially discussed so I can put that back out to April see where her folks are at in Boylston say where you know our select board wants to do this mm -hmm. and have her reach out to her side and see right what their ideas are on that and if not then we giddy up and do it yep that's fine. That'd as be much great. as I like all of you, sure. I don't like eleven o'clock sessions at night fighting over. No. So. Mm -mm. Me neither. I'd never make it. <laughs> but um, I will communicate back to um, Nancy and Carol that we had this conversation, um, and that we want to see the level funded budget. This was just what was presented preliminarily to the FinCom. We need a date not hey the board was talking and they were wondering if you could send no we want a level funded budget by insert date here well they probably already have a level funded budget they probably just need to send it to us correct don't make that assumption well, well i don't know. Level in the service. In they the call their budget level, level service, service. Not level funded level service well which one do we want well, I just want to make sure we're yeah, clear. Level service, yes, right. I think, is level in, service is level makes service. more sense. Right. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes costs do go yep. up. I right. mean, even if they go up. Understand. Right. Understandable. But yep. I would give them a date. Don't let them loosey goosey it, and then that's we hold them to. Well, that. she, you know, the, the the information that Kristen sent us from the school with the above level services budget and the increase. Yep. Um, that was all. I mean, you must know the level services budget then, so it shouldn't be uh, so difficult yeah. to no. send us send us that. <laughs> Don't assume. I know. So I will request it, and I will ask. I will say, do you have it now? And if not, I will request it by. Would you like our January eighth meeting? By our January eighth meeting. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. Sure. So they're on vacation the week of. I mean, it is the holiday. The twenty sixth. They're back. Correct. The week of of uh, New Year's. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we want it by January eighth, no later than 
five I, o'clock end of day. Assuming it exists. Right assuming now. it exists. Well, well I mean, then you know what? Right you make it exist. Right. It, 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 it has to. Well, and if it's not something they have prepared and they tell us they need a little bit more time, we'll assess it then. Okay. I will talk to them. You're much kinder oh. than I because I'd be like, no. <laughs> no, we're level funding you. No. <laughs> when it comes to our on time budgets, are uh, we doing getting our department budgets? Um, I think we're in decent shape. I think you're still waiting for a few, but yeah, not too many. So we're more more than forward. five? Yeah. Yeah, but not much more than five. Less than 10? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk tomorrow then, because I thought we were closer to five. Yeah, I have to send out another reminder. Okay. Most of them are in, it's just a lot of them need to do a little tweaking before. Oh, I wouldn't count that as not in. That's not in. So there's probably about seven that aren't never, we think just didn't come in. So if seven didn't come in, how many are tweaking? All right, I don't want to put you on the spot, but yeah, that definitely needs to be. And this is the time we tweak them, so yeah. I'd be more yeah. concerned about the ones that aren't in. Okay. All right. Okay, may I continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I kind of think we got off on a tangent here, didn't we? I think we're a little amped up from the rail trail, but that's all right. We'll get back <coughs> into this. Um, I actually have been working on a $10,000 Maya grant um, for HVAC control evaluation at the municipal offices. Anybody who spent any time in this building <laughs> knows that it's not consistent throughout the building. And um, I'm meeting, we're having a meeting, Fred and I, um, with a um, HVAC a person tomorrow who will be giving us an estimate and a quote for that. And Maya has expressed willingness to fund it. So I'm hopeful mm. that um, we can get it through. So they're actually um, holding, they were going to close out funding. They don't have a deadline, but they usually have, they usually say, well, we get so many projects, we're out of funding. And they said, we're very interested in this project of yours. When can you get us a quote? And I said, uh, how about Tuesday? And they said, sure. So I'm hopeful on that one. Um, not as great news on ARPA, unfortunately. There is an amendment on the table that looks like it may pass, uh, which would require all funds to be under contract by the end of 2024. So before it was funds had to be appropriated. Now they're talking about contracts with vendors and consultants. So um, what if I, it's a plan, you know, a plan to spend it on social social services or something. Then you'd have to have some type of employment Contract. agreement or have that position in place at that time. But, you know, for example, one of the things, and I did reach out to Julie Lee about the playground, um, that's one of the ones that have been lagging a little bit because she was going to do a more comprehensive plan that looked at the, <coughs> replacing the whole thing and making it ADA accessible. That's something where we'd have to have it out yep. to bid in a contract with a vendor. And there's a lot of concerns because you're looking at going out to bid, we've got supply chain issues, we've got limited local contractors. So I did submit a comment um, letter as recommended by uh, Congresswoman Trahan's office saying this just doesn't work, especially for smaller communities. But we'll see where that goes. Yeah. So um, Anne Gobi's, uh, the Rural Affairs Director's meetings continue to be productive and we go from bad news to good news. Um, there was a millionaire's tax that was implemented in the state of Massachusetts, a 4% tax that's going to education and transportation. And I am pleased to report we were notified today that we will be receiving an additional $118,650 in Chapter 90 funding for FY24, which Fred says was the best news he's heard all day. I think that bar was low today, but I'll take it. So. And for people watching at home, Chapter 90 funds are used how? Roads. Roads. So this so. would help <laughs> sort of get improve in roads in town. Yes. Get that roads, done. bridges, culverts. Those get that bridge things. done. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So that was it. really Can exciting news. remind me to not <clears throat> take a so, left uh, uh, and then a right, 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 right. to go home? Right. I go there every <laughs> single time after this so, meeting. It's taken a while for me to <laughs> reprogram my, my brain oh. on that one, too. But so, yep, this this good news, um, and that is uh, continuing year to year. So the appropriation will likely be different in what they allocate the funds to from year to year, but mm. that is a indefinite at this time tax, mm. and the schools will be getting some funding as well. So we like that. 
Um, also, we're talking about shared animal control and in animal inspectional services, perhaps, uh, looking at a possible six town regional agreement that would include a full-time and part-time animal control officer and inspector plus expenses that would cost me about seventeen thousand per town i can tell you right now our funding combined for those two positions is about eleven thousand so it is slightly more but um it would uh include a, it would we would have to work out the vehicle piece of it too um, but we wouldn't have to host it west boylston has offered to host it which is of benefit because they would handle all of the administration and HR and all of that. So there is a potential benefit to it. I'm a little worried about it because I think there's too many towns in it. Um, and I think if we can continue, I, I, we were trying to incorporate our current inspector and it may be too many towns for her because mm -hmm. she serves three, f four of these towns right now. So it all kind of comes down to what would work out. Um, but it's, it's good to have these regional discussions if they can, you know, have some benefit to them and potential cost saving measures. I'm not sure this one, you know, is, but we'll, we'll continue to look into it. Um, also, uh, had a really interesting conversation um, with a resident who proposed creating a parks and field maintenance position for the town and potentially the schools to share. Um, this would be really focused on the schools and the parks. And one of the things we've been talking about, from what I understand, way predates me, is taking the maintenance off of recreation so they can actually focus on programming, not things like necessarily goose patrol and keeping the fields up. And you know, this, this uh, resident who came by said, you know, he was part of efforts where volunteers were out pulling weeds out of the little league fields. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you know, I don't know if we had the money for it, but it's certainly something worthy of exploration. So I did share it with the superintendent. She was going to have a look into it a little bit. We we're going to have a conversation this week about it. And Fred and I are going to have a conversation. It, it piqued his interest as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll see if there's an opportunity to look at that, because the one thing with recreation is I, I said, I cannot put any more on Fred. So that if we're going to take that off of recreation, it needs to come with not only more people, but more funding for highway to take over that responsibility um, in order to do it because they are just maxed out right now. So that is an interesting potential opportunity we're looking at. Um, also attended an electronic ballot box presentation that was really interesting. I didn't get to attend the first Did one, but Peg attended both. One? Yes. Yep. And it's um, like a giant black trash can. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, my the concern kind of stems from grill. how long it's taking people <laughs> to collect um, to and tabulate the votes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to look into that. Uh, seemed like the one that was presented last week was more Massachusetts based and um, had a lot of presence in this state, about 200 cities and towns and uh, folks seem to respond positively to it. So we'll see where we go from there. We're waiting on full pricing and further conversations there. Facilities study condition assessments have started coming in by building. And yes, I realize they say Berlin, Connecticut on them and I have already reached out to them. They will be fixing that. They send their sincerest apologies. She was mortified. Um, <laughs> They're so gonna, they're called back with Berlin, New Hampshire, right? Is that what they're? Yes. Gonna I say? really hope not. <laughs> Otherwise, we we have a bigger problem. So, um, but the plan is to have the facilities study group initially review them. Then they're going to compile them into a draft report, which we will present to the board and towns and committees for their review and comment. Um, I will say for the initial ones that have come in for the Bullard House <laughs> and the curatorial building, I have sent them to historical commission because obviously they have, right. you know, care, custody and control over those buildings. So did involve them in that discussion and um, library obviously will want to involve library board of trustees. But overall, I want to kind of get a, a full draft and then be able to present it more broadly um, to the boards and committees and the select board. So. Um, unfortunately, uh, we did have a conversation about a 13 acre land donation from Mark Rhodes at our last meeting for conservation purposes on Long Dudley Road. Given ongoing litigation in the area, we have been advised against accepting the land at this time. Um, we have notified Mr. Rhodes and um, there is a possibility if it's available again down the line, we could look at it when the litigation is resolved but um, now is unfortunately not the time to do it. 
also wanted to follow up on the question about creating an associate position for CONCOM. Um, CONCOM can recommend and the select board can appoint an associate member as long as they are non-voting. Um, unfortunately, special legislation is required to add a voting alternate because that is not contemplated in Mass General Law. Now, how, how does it work with CBA? It, it's all different rules for different boards and committees. Okay. So under the specific statute for conservation committees, it does not allow voting associate alternates or associate, voting alternates or associate members. So we had to pull up the specific MGL statute and, okay. and look at it. But the nice so. thing about that is that if they have an associate, if someone steps down from the board, then they have the opportunity for someone just to swing in right. and start of doing the dance again. Yep, get the experience, <coughs> get knowledgeable. Yep. And someone who has some institutional knowledge already who's ready Correct. to jump in on things. So yeah. Yep. yep. I think several committees have non-voting alternates, and yeah. so yep. I think so non-voting alter is probably be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that's something conservation does want to move forward with, they're more than welcome to, yeah, to that bring that road. forward. Um, the select board does have to, as the appointing authority, appoint. does have to vote, well, but I would get a recommendation, right. obviously, yeah. from them. Yeah. Um, good news on the town's housing production plan. Um, it has been approved by the state, uh, which is great. That's part of the update to the master plan master planning process so many thanks to planning board for all of their effort in this and I am pleased to announce that we received seven quotes for the flooring replacement project at the municipal offices and I am in the process of going through them did we did we pass that at town meeting last year that was on the FY 24 capital plan okay and it's for just the public safety side some tile ceramic tile vinyl tile and carpet tile. How about ceiling tiles? <laughs> not that kind of tile, unfortunately. <laughs> Flooring, not ceiling. <laughs> okay. All right. Questions? Anybody? Is that even a question? I have to ask it. I, I know you do. No. <laughs> um, go ahead, Mr. Scott. No, I'm fine. Okay. On the building assessment, I know that you had tried to get us together this week, but Fire Mike is out and there's a couple other of us that can't make it this week. Is there another meeting scheduled? I now was looking at everybody's schedules because the problem was everybody is, I cannot get everybody on now until after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. So I will be sending out another one, but everybody is on vacation at various points throughout the next couple of weeks given the holidays. So we'll have to look at after New Year. And you have sent out all those lovely assessments yes. uh, to all the different boards? No, so this is initially to review by the facilities committee because okay. it's just a draft. Then we're going to put it all together into a <laughs> comprehensive draft report. But if it affected a building that's operated by a board, then yes, I sent it to that okay. board. Mm -hmm. But like I didn't do planning board or, right. you know, or select board. Right, yet. Yeah. And then I want to also get the package together, to send to the energy committee so they can look at it from an energy perspective because it does have energy information in it mm -hmm. as I started reviewing it. So. All right. Um, ba, ba, ba. On the Berlin lease agreement, I noticed um, not on the lease agreement, but the other one, the other document that had been put out there. Yep. I didn't see anything about the lifting of fees for recreation for custodial support. Yeah. Is that just not in there, or did I just not read it? And so, and this is what's this is what's tough. So I actually spoke to council about this today because you know, in in the draft lease, basically what it says is that the town would have, you know, use of the property when the school is not using it or not in session. But ultimately the town uh, as having use or control of it during that time would be responsible for any costs that are associated with it, which could include custodial fees. So that's the challenge. There's not really a way to get around that the fee they can collect fees from anyone who's using the gym during that time period which is part of what was contemplated in the draft agreement that julie sent forward um but what's interesting um she said that the uh hold on sorry i just lost my train of thought completely the um the town would be responsible for costs collected to it but that um, designees ah that's where it is designees such as rec would not be subject to school policies but should comply with town policies so that is something that would have to be approved by the school committee so i sent it to carol costello and asked her to have you know their attorney take a preliminary look at it that's something that both parties would have to agree upon 
but essentially what she's saying is the way that it's worded is that um, the, the, any designee of the town, which could be REC, this is where the legalese got me, shall not be subject to the policy or the fees of the lessee, which is the town, I mean the school. So at times, so they have to comply with all the policies while using it, but not pay the fees. So I think that's going to be the challenge is whether the school is willing to agree to that. Because that's like $5,000 a weekend that REC has to come up with. What? If is it that it's, much? It's you mean a season? No. It's $34 an hour for a janitor. And that oh, janitor there yeah. is there for eight hours on Saturday, so that's 2400 ish mm -hmm. no. And if they're there on no. Sunday... Uh, no, I thought it was five thousand dollars per season because it's only for yeah, it's only a couple well, months. Thirty-four in winter. Eight is still only two hundred seventy-two dollars. Right. Well, thirty-four times eight hours. Yeah. Right. And then another eight hours on Sunday. Right. Times two. That's okay. five hundred dollars. All right. So then that's four months in a four times. weeks in a month. So you're looking at a grand, right? It was yeah. in the email. I'm trying to say a ten-week program. I think that's so where you're you looking get to the at five grand. Yeah. Yeah. It's five grand for ten weeks. I thought yeah. you said a couple thousand a weekend, and I'm like, it only goes a couple thousand a weekend. It's right. five thousand for the season. I want that. Job. I was just gonna say, I'd like to get involved in that gig. That would be a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just, I, I yeah, I just think that that's a, again, that this agreement was in place for years but never enforced, and now all of a sudden it's. But then I understand that the application came in late too. Like a day or two. So before it was a policy the school the committee program. adopted in 20, 2022. 2022. You said. Yeah. Um, and it was a, it was approved by the school committee. It was not enforced under the former superintendent, which I can't really speak to that. But the current superintendent is trying to enforce the school committee's policy. So under page eleven, under. C toilet facilities. It's and I, I. Wait, which agreement are you on? Sorry. The um, third party agreement, final, o nine o three eighteen. The one that Julie sent. Well, yeah, the one that was it's part of the a, package. Yep. It was just a. Oh, a, the sample. The sample. The yep. sample. Okay. Yeah. So there's nothing in here that's final because it talks about the city shall place blah 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 as the responsibility of the city to maintain maintain right. these facilities. That was a sample agreement that. Town Council used to incorporate some of that language okay. into the overall BMS lease. So, because I asked them, I said, Do you think we need to have two separate agreements? And she said, No, I can roll the concept into the overall BMS lease, which I thought made sense rather mm -hmm. than having two separate agreements. So, whether the school is going to agree to that or not, I don't know. I understand why they want to have a custodian to open and close the building and clean. I I, I get that. It's, it's just it's liability issue. Yeah, I mean, but they're trying my, to be responsible for the building, and make sure nothing happens to it when they're not there. Right. So I do understand that. Understandable, but as Lieutenant Polino noted tonight, there is a fire person on site when that building is open. So, but it's not always going to be like that. That's because right, of for the, the fire for the time pump. being. Yeah. Correct. So, but I'm thinking yeah. They're not though cleaning the bathrooms and emptying the trash and checking to make sure if the heat goes down that yeah. the proper person's called. I mean, that that's where the challenge comes in, right? So, one of the things I did say was you can petition the school committee for a change to that policy. Um, you know, that would really be the way to go about it because it was, you know, it's, adopted I mean, by it, them. The, there's only an issue at Berlin Memorial, though. Mm -hmm. There's no issue at Boylston because they pay, Correct. they pay fees to use the building, mm -hmm. and Tahanto's the same. And they waive the so fees. the only they one don't waive that it has an issue is Berlin because they don't want to pay a fee to use the gym. Mm. Right. And just to clarify, so too, it might be difficult to change a policy too. Right school committee policy yeah. depending on how Boylston feels about it so when do you expect feedback back I sent it to Carol was it last week or the week before um, you know it depends on how long it takes her legal when you counsel call, when you to call her tomorrow it. Yeah. I will follow up on it you <laughs> got Thank it you. All right. <laughs> um, ba -ba 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 um on the correspondence um, there was a one that came in. It was with, like over the weekend? Yeah. Um, a concern <coughs> from a resident regarding activities on Colburn 
and I just want to make sure that um, Chief okay. Shatner is in the loop and that he is addressing this. Are you talking about the mattress? Nope. 107 Coburn Road. What was the email about? What was the title? Uh, oh, 107, 107 Coburn, Coburn Road. Road. <laughs> uh, regarding um, air horns of trucks blaring on the property. So I just want to make sure that, because it only looked like it came to us, I just want to make sure that it was forwarded. You know, forwarded I, didn't look, I didn't look at who it was. Just us? This is that the ZBA, ZBA. matter that's yep. been going on. Um, I will make sure that it gets forwarded to you. You did get it, though. I was not on the original email. It was just the ZBA, and well, it said this he, office misspelled. Yeah, yeah, it bounced back, and so that's why it came back again. Oh, that's that is oh the, then i got the second one i see yep when it bounced i got yep. the second one okay let me um i will forward it to the chief right. to look into yep so i just want to make sure that it that i mean obviously we don't have anything to do with it um uh, but i want to make sure that chief shatna um is involved and then the other correspondence in regard to highland liquor i know it's not on the agenda but didn't know if that could be discussed yeah it's state law we can't change it what was the ask? they wanted to what open early, ask? but they can't. They wanted open. to open. They wanted to oh. open uh, at nine an hour earlier. You can't open before ten, unfortunately, under MGL as a package store. So, can we get back to him and let him know? We did. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, and can you please keep on old business the update of the town hall contract? I know that there's some personal stuff, which obviously family always comes first, mm -hmm. but I don't want the contract just to fall by the wayside without the proper updates. Okay. And that's it. Okie doke. So the next thing we have is old business to discuss the ambulance collections policy. So, good news, not too many changes to it from the last time that you saw it. We just had the flow of a few things incorrect in terms of what flowed from the fire chief to the town accountant to the town administrator, um, changed in the, off in a couple of sections that we needed to adjust. So let me just pull that up. Yeah, I noticed that's fallen off the rep his reports. What's that? The... Um, statuses of the collections so can we make sure that that gets back on the right <coughs> yeah. oh he can't write anything off right now okay without the select board so part of this was we needed to update that policy before we could move forward okay. with doing anything so this policy goes even beyond writing off it actually talks about how we're collecting the fees reviewing the fees to make sure that we're charging for everything that we should be charging for it lays out specific instances in which fees can be written off, mm -hmm. uh, including a financial hardship request due to the, if the person is deceased, those types of things. And basically what it does, and we talked about this a little bit last time, because it, it is pretty sensitive information, um, the fire chief would provide a recommendation to the town administrator and the town administrator would be authorized to issue uh, authorized write-offs within the confines of this policy and would provide the select board with the number amount and date range of accounts written off in the town administrator's report following a write-off so and is we, that what you're looking for is just the number the summary yeah like we expected to get okay we got that yeah because his other report and i don't i don't want personal data huh? no i just want we think we're going to get, we got, we have to write off. That's all. Simple math. Okay. Just like That's why I reports. found it very, that just reminded me of the uh, email back from Megan, the chair from yep. the school, saying that they can't give us, uh, you know, that it's private information for special ed. Yeah, we weren't asking for names and Nobody numbers, was and asking we did for clarify that, that and at the years, Year meeting. after year after year, they, no they one do wants to give know. the numbers for special ed. Right. They don't give the Ten. name, address, and, ser and social security numbers, right. though. We didn't ask for it last year. <laughs> no, we, we just don't wanted, ask, No, we never right. asked We don't for ask for diagnosis. We no. want dollar no. dollars. Ten. Yeah. We clarified that, too, at the yeah. FinCom meeting. Yeah. I think, in fairness, being a new chair, she may not have realized exactly what could be given out and couldn't. So she was saying the whole thing was yeah. not valid, but we clarified that. You and 
Carol? No, at the FinCon meeting. Oh, at, oh, at the FinCon meeting. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, I think this new policy is, is fine. I think it is clear. I mm -hmm. said not just write-offs, but the whole process. I, I, I think the exception rules are fine. Um, so I am fine to move this policy. Thank you. You're good with it? I am, too. Okay. Then I'll second it. Okay. Um, all in favor of this policy, say aye. 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 All righty. <laughs> Moving on to coffee talk discussion, January 18th. I think so we had a, was a thing for that, didn't we? We have it in a month, so I wanted to put it on well in advance to make sure we had a conversation about what should go on it. Can we also talk out about a publicize it? Because unfortunately, when two people show up, it's really not much of a coffee talk. So I think we need to do a better job at getting. Uh, I mean, we out. did flyers, Facebook, website. I, I don't know what more we can. Do. Right, we've so had not great the, turnout at the last several. Yeah. Will the hybrid meeting thing be? Will the equipment be ready for the hybrid on January? So we could 18th? do both. Hopefully, yeah. I'll follow up with Brittany on it. Okay, I mean, I think we had better people, more people coming when it was uh, Zoom. Yep. Then, you know, could be you too. Turnout is real true. <laughs> yeah, well, well that's, that's for sure. That's, that's all you got to say. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I think if we said school budget, it would get a good turnout. Too. Yep. Maybe. We just don't have enough information yet because that was all preliminary. So I wouldn't want to. I also wouldn't want to share their information We're without just kidding. them. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Sorry. We got serious tonight, so I want to make sure. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I, I initially for, thought Rail Trail too, but then I realized without having, you know, it, I almost was thinking someone who could moderate, who could share that information, who had time to research the facts and everything, it, it might not be very productive was my only concern. Because we have a lot of the concerns. I think we start with sharing the study with whoever does I think the, you need to hear from the people. Yep. I feel like I heard pretty loud and clear <laughs> in the study, but I'm there happy was only to five hear people more. Here. Yeah. No, 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 the study. I read, I read oh, the okay, study. Gotcha. It included yes. uh, comments from all the forums they had and Facebook and so, no, no, I. I thought you meant tonight. Oh, no, not tonight. No, no, from the feasibility <laughs> study. I think there, no, there needs to be more discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. Is Coffee Talk the place to have it? I don't know. So then just throw the topic out there. Now we are gathering information on a potential rail trail that may may happen, location, blah, blah, blah. We are gathering information. Please keep us posted. If you have questions, send them to town admin at townofberlin.com. Um, <laughs> but just to get it out there so that people are Yeah. The problem is thinking. if we do it now and then it's six months until we bring somebody on board who can answer those questions, I feel like that's a lag. I'd rather wait till we have, if we're going to do this, wait till we have somebody who can answer those questions. Uh, I don't know how much they, by the 18th we'll even know like our full flexibility yeah. for the grant. Like, are we? Are we? Is the hundred thousand just for a very specific path or not? Yeah. We well, don't know. We're going to talk about we it on know. the 8th, so we should know. Hopefully, yep. Well, we I got a pretty quick might response. Know we might ten, know ten days beforehand, and so we're not <laughs> able to say much to anyone else before that. Well, I just, it might be just one subject you throw out there to the public. Hostility is going to start already. Yep. Just because of tonight. Yep. Yeah. And it got nasty. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. going to say it already. It, the comments were very nasty and cutting. Yep. I can only yeah. imagine. Where is Coffee Talk going to be? We were just discussing that. Oh, we're hoping for hybrid. So I'm going to reach out to Brittany <laughs> and I will let you know. Um, and then it would have to be in one of the hybrid yeah. meeting rooms here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if we want to do it, I would recommend somebody moderate that discussion that is not one of the four of us. Oh, good luck with that. Tim, Tim's pretty good. Maybe I think moderate. Tim would be a great moderator. He's, he's pretty he laid, laid back. Yeah, he, he may not want to. This is what happens when you leave in the middle of a meeting, Tim. <laughs> Did you volunteer? You get assigned. He was oh, volunteered. No, if, if you leave, you Vol get assigned. That's right. You know what? I, Plop it on there, leave it for a discussion topic, and then we can always weed it out when we meet on the 8th. And and also, you know, is there anything else we need to talk about? It's 
early. I mean, we'll have more information on the budget at that point, but we're still getting presentations mm -hmm. from departments before FinCom. So FinCom won't have really made any concrete decisions at that point. So I'm going to go back to a point that Scott made a couple weeks ago, that we have to stress on the budget, that when people stand up and can have concerns mm -hmm. about their taxes going up, that they also have a responsibility to come to the select board and have chats with us when these uh, budgets are presented, to also go to FinCom and have chats with them, and to also come to town meeting, because it does not do any good when I've answered no, no, and no for me to say, what are you going to do about my taxes? So maybe it's just a point that we can stress that budget season's in full gear. We're going to be having these meetings. Watch the agenda if you have a concern. Come talk to us, submit it in writing, town admin at town of .com, but just to get the information out there so it's not a. <gasps> yeah, well, it's also my people who complain about the taxes to me. It's like, what is Berlin spending money on that you would like to us not to be spending money on? Mm -hmm. And they sometimes have ideas, but their ideas are things that, like, well, you spent, you know, $25 extra on postage here and like yeah but we have a what 16 million dollar budget you know if you're gonna have an impact on the taxes yeah. you have to cut tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. and yeah. and sadly tens of thousand dollars only come from two or three places because we, we really can't control the the health insurance costs and we can't control mm -hmm. the Worcester retirement costs you know and so it is the town will have to start to do less of something mm -hmm. we're doing at and uh, I think that's a fair statement to say you know do you know but, that 50 uh, two percent is school and twenty three percent is public safety right. which leaves a whopping twenty five ish percent for us to really right. do anything with were you aware of that oh no I wasn't or no, but, but it's also that you take fire police and highway out of it which are also things that I think we all generally in the town want to spend more Correct. money on you know that that spending less on that means that the police are not there for things fa as fast fires not there for things as fast roads are not fixed mm -hmm. as fast down trees are not removed as fast things are not plowed as right. fast you know all the things that people on on Facebook today we're talking about how great we do as a town correct you know do the, with a and frankly we if we cut the highway department in a half which I would never advocate for that would save people what 20 bucks a year yeah. on their taxes maybe uh, a lot because we'd lose everybody right well right, 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 right. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. Well, it's the same with people who um, wish for their dump to be open longer. It's like, that's great, but that means we need <laughs> to pay people more. So but, and maybe it's just time for that frank a discussion with them. You don't want your taxes to go up. Okay, we hear you. What are you willing to do without? Right, because some of these people don't allow? want commercial spaces yes. in town and commercial pays for some of the taxes too. Correct. And I was just going to say, what are you willing to allow right. in right. or rezone? Right. Or because there, there's those components of it too right. that you need to look at. And well, remember a lot of the asks that we got when we talked about the ARPA money? Yep. Well, those might be things you have to live without. Yep. Right. And as fabulous as conservation land is, and don't get me wrong, I love my conservation land, but you're also taking away from land that could be developed that brings in taxes. So well, you have to balance to it all, too. Right. Well, and maybe we talk about ARPA, what's on the list. Yeah. You know, uh, because uh, quite a few people... Or what we've spent right, so what far, we've spent, earmarked. What's, right, what's before. left, and uh, if this goes through where we have to have contracts in place... Yeah. We're going to have to giddy up decisions. and we're going to have to giddy up quick, yep. you know, if you want some of these. So. I think we could have all of them under contract in 12 months because it's not spent. So even your yeah. playground example, we have a contract with a playground company and it's going to take them a year to get the parts. It's still under contract by that point. And so that wouldn't cause us to have to give back the money. And some, the some of it is, you know, I'd have getting the boards and committees and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. getting that to move forward. But just to go back to your point about getting the word out about the budget um i just did an article it's in the powder house news that's going out to the exact point please this is when town meeting is come to our select board meetings on monday nights come to the fincom meetings on wednesdays we want to hear from you if you don't want to come to those meetings email call you know i tried to put all that information in there so hopefully that'll be helpful i would send it to jan at the item as well i'm Can sure do you, do you have her does address? she pick up on the powder house news articles no not really okay yes i have jan's address yeah so i would get it out in the item and get it out often in the item and we could yeah. also use the item to get coffee talk out 
and the mm. town's website. And yes, the, town's the, website the and town's our unofficial own, pages. Town's and official pages and maybe we could maybe ask the some lions. people will do unofficial pages. Right. We could maybe ask the lions to use their whiteboard in the center of town. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you look at those three items, rail trail budget and ARPA. <laughs> and I won't be here, so. <laughs> Why don't you just throw Are you serious? in there? <laughs> you won't be here? You just said I was taking a cruise That's that right. week. That's right. Oh, I thought you said you weren't missing anything. I though. was going to miss the select board meeting that week. I didn't have the 18th. Totally forgot about so that. I didn't that. know that was oh. to be missed. Okay. Smart. I'm glad you all just talked over the comment I made because I really wanted to reel that back, so I'm really glad Good. I was able to. Good. You said Roger, really could you pull that back up on tape, please, for us when you uh, <laughs> renew it? There you go. <laughs> oh, I just said we have a lot of controversial things coming up, though. I yes. mean, that's, that's, that's good. the reality. That's excitement. That's that might get people more involved in government because, yep. yep. you know, the, 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 I think more people should be involved in things. So. Yep. Absolutely. A lot of difficult decisions. I think it's just that a Facebook page encouraging people to get involved in a project in town. So. Well, it's sad when you have, what, 2,700 registered voters. In a town of 32, 30, 300 people watch this, that's like 70%. How'd I do for math? Close? Well, like, the number of registered voters of eligible voters is pretty high because of those remaining 300, a lot of them are kids. Correct, but I'm saying if or you look at if you look at the number of registered voters and you look at past elections, you only okay. have about 200 that are voting, so yeah. less than 10% of this town dictates what the rest happen. Well, so, yeah, for town stuff, yeah. For the town stuff, yes. We get good turnout. But, but it is a stuff. high number of registered voters, though, compared to what I'm used to seeing. It is a high number of registered voters, but it's a low turnout. they got to come out. Right. So that's part of it as well in all of the uh, this oh. messaging. So. All right. All right. So we'll put coffee back talk back on the 8th. Yes. Yeah. And we've got ARPA, Real Trail, and Budget so far. <laughs> Sounds like fun. They yeah. call in sick that night. People, people probably won't come. <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they will. All right. And the uh, the next renewals. the next uh, agenda item is the annual license renewals. Okay. <coughs> the list of them on the agenda, even. So actually, believe it or not, I ran into this. Um, according to Open Meeting Law, you're supposed to list them all out on the agenda. That's good. Okay. Really, uh, I, I think it's That's better because mm -hmm. it saves me from digging and all the mm -hmm. other stuff. And, Just wait, and I think it's great because these are all great businesses in town. Some are more active than others. You know, obviously mm -hmm. some are over it's free the advertising. Mall, but, but I think it's great to list like folks. You know, if you buy food from these places, mm -hmm. that meals tax comes back to the town. Right. So I would make a recommendation. I have to say, for the most part, everybody's done a phenomenal job this year. Many thanks to Dee for getting this all organized because there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of oh, yeah. time and effort that goes into this. And I remember previous year's spreadsheets with columns about what's yep. been done. Oh, yeah. She has so. taken this and run with it and has yes, done a yeah, phenomenal wow. job. Very good. Um, yes, we have colors. Yeah. And we'll um, get the Berlin General Store address updated. Yes, we will fix that. And I would also ask because there are a couple little pieces that are missing here and there, so everything would be contingent upon submission of all required documentation. Yeah. Okay. I would move that we approve all these licenses with the correction of Berlin uh, General Store's address and uh, conditional upon people getting all their paperwork in appropriately. Uh, that we approve this list of businesses to get their licenses. Do I hear a second. second? Yeah, I'll second. I mean, Berlin General Store is listed correctly once and then incorrectly right. twice. Right. Okay. If there's nothing else, then we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All righty. Go to the next page. Uh, board questions on the agendas and liaison updates. Um, I probably should have sent this to you as an email. Uh, I, I would like to look at the CPA membership. Okay. Um, one of the things is that uh, uh, the members of the CPA committee are members of the groups that are allowed to spend the money of the various buckets, except for housing. Uh, oh. Because the housing trust didn't exist at the time the CPA was put together, the housing partnership mm. was given a position on the Oof. the uh, CPA. Was that created by town meeting, though? It, it might so have we been. might have to. So see. I, okay. I, I, I think this is the start of a process. Eloise is doing a, a great job. She's connected with everything, mm -hmm. so I have no doubt that she's doing. But that you know, at some point, trying to fix that so the housing partnership potentially. We've some of the housing partners. We went to a joint meeting. I think some of us are going to a couple of those meetings anyway. Just. Uh, 
uh, to do, but it seemed like something to, to fix okay. when we got around to it. I know the housing partnership was created by town meeting. Was the composition outlined no, in no, that the, article? The, the CPA membership. CPA, I'm so, sorry. Yeah. I said I said um, housing trust. Uh, I don't remember fully. Okay. I didn't know if that was set by the select board or not. We'll right. look because yep. the way it was set up is yeah, the, way the way we have, have to, to change yep, it. Yep. Yeah. And and if it has, I mean, if it's a main town meeting article, we're plenty of time to put something yep. on a main town meeting article. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those, is that your question? That was my question, comment, agenda item thing. Liaison yes. update? Yes, liaison <laughs> update. <laughs> I really okay. canceled and I took a nap through. I, I lost nap roulette on Friday when <coughs> I missed the, the historical meeting. You what? I take 20 minute naps regularly. I lay down at 5.30 and it was eight o'clock when I woke up and oh. historical was all done. So I, I lost nap roulette and missed a historic meeting. <laughs> historical <laughs> meeting. Historical meeting. I've yes. done that making dinner thing and yeah. schools meeting right. is online, but right. it's at five o'clock. Right. 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 So it's, it's kind of hard to see them all. Yeah. Did you want me to go first? Absolutely. We'll just all right. down the line. Well, I went to ZBA last Wednesday night. Um, they had two hearings. The first hearing was for Coburn Road, uh, CSI Septic. Um, they had a home-based contracting permit that expired, and a new permit was required because of additions they made to the original permit without <laughs> permission. <laughs> so it got to be a little... Um, contentious. Con yes, af after much contentious discussion um, between neighbors and, and um, others. Uh, the origin original permit was granted with um, nothing additional added, such as the porta potties that they've added on their own, and another truck for only, and the permit's only good for two years. I think they're usually for f five. I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, the other hearing was 203 Crosby Road re requesting an in law apartment. And all requirements were met. ZB, ZBA voted to approve. So one was difficult and one was a little easier. But I have to say, even in a contentious meeting like they had, I have to give a lot of credit to ZBA members and especially Lynn Ryan. She did a great job of keeping everybody, you know, on task, being very calm when others would get upset. She really does do a remarkable job um, chairing the ZBA. I can see why she has been asked to do it a second time. So um, that's all I got. Mine quick. Um, Kristen already covered one of them, Energy. I provided comments. I'm waiting to see who else is providing comments on the uh, comparison of the two machines and there were very distinct differences um, between them. And then uh, CONCOM, you had sent us all an email regarding Highland Ridge pending information on CONCOM, so does that session need to be an executive session? No, because right now um, nothing has been okay. initiated with the okay. courts. All right, I just wanted to make sure where uh, CONCOM isn't meeting until after the first of the year that if they needed to giddy up on an executive session, they knew about it ahead of time. Right. No, and, and I mean, this, this is a public filing, so the, they reserved their rights to file okay. within the um, period of, uh, what's it called? Statute of limitations. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. So that's all we have right now. Okay. All right. That's it. I'm done. Okay. Um, uh -huh. What? Anything Sorry, else? It's my Christmas me. present. Aww. I told her. I told her you only two. I only had two. Um, Can I get another one for my birthday? <laughs> a, and I forgot to mention it last time we met. A giant shout out to Rec and First Parish Church and Fire and Santa and Police and everyone who was involved in Christmas in Berlin um, a couple weeks ago. Despite the yucky rain, great turnout. Cordelia's uh, for donating trees and highway for putting up the lights and we even had a surprise visit by Margaret Nardowitz so it was very nice that she stopped in on her way home so thank you for doing all that okay now I'm done um, the new election potentially 
uh, machines would make a great coffee talk conversation. Oh, that's true. To talk to people about that. that. Be oh, that'll be hugely controversial. Well, let's just add and, to the list. And, and necessary. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm throwing open Because the people who are going to be, again, mo think it's most controversial are oh, not people who are going to sit here until 4 in the morning <laughs> counting ballots for 20 you have hours. have to do that. Well, yeah, and unfortunately the people who are to willing to sit there heads. until 4 o'clock in the morning right. are going down and down and down. Right, right. Where right. These machines are extremely secure. Yeah, there is no chance of voter fraud for it. Right. It's truly, they are locked and loaded yep. with multiple locks and multiple encrypted sticks. So it's not like you go, could go out to um, Staples and go buy a memory stick and shove it in. It yep. doesn't work that way. And I so. the decision to change the process is by through the clerk's office, not here. Mm -hmm. I think once she makes the decision, it would be great to potentially do a vote of support of, yeah. of whatever direction she decides to go. Sounds good. Okay. So, if there's nothing uh, else, um, we have no need for executive session. I would enter a motion to adjourn. Okay. Okay, we got a, a motion and an okay. So, <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 aye.